Hey guys, just doing a fairly quick video on vehicle extrication. So the aim of vehicle extrication is to minimize spinal movement by immobilizing the patient for removal. And it's been very heavily incorporated traditionally into paramedic training. And sometimes it is value added, but often it's not. And often it goes overboard. And that's what we're going to get into today. So these two things of spinal immobilization and extrication are both true. The first is that a spinal cord injury that's managed poorly may be exacerbated by incorrect immobilization and extrication. And it's that understanding and the concern surrounding that that has led to the traditional focus on uh, very thorough immobilization and extrication in ambulance services around the world. There is a more recent understanding that the risk of um, rescuer induced spinal cord injury exacerbation is probably overstated. Now, the other thing that's true is that a seriously injured patient that has an extended extrication and an extended on scene time is going to have a worse outcome. Now these two things are in direct opposition to each other. We need to get good at making a judgment about which one is going to be more important on a case by case basis on our scene. Now this device is called the Kendrick extrication device. And there is a uh, very similar device called a NIJ as well. Now, you may still run into these in the ambulance services. They are essentially never used anymore. The idea of them was to slide them down the back uh, of the patient between the patient and the chair as you can see here and immobilize the, the head and chest. The thinking was that you kept the spine, the cervical and thoracic and lumbar spine all in uh, alignment. What they found is that it takes a very long time to put on and when they've done um, movement studies, they've found that extricating someone with one of these on actually causes more spinal movement than if you simply let them walk out themselves, uh, rendering the thing completely useless. Now that's not to say that extrication is valueless. You are going to have to extricate people from vehicles. What's important is that everything is value added. You recognize by now that this is something that you're just going to hear a lot from me, that in trauma, things need to be value added. Now, when you get on a scene, you need to figure out, is your patient entrapped or are they not entrapped? Uh, if they're entrapped, if they're encapsulated, so if the car is caved in around them, very often uh, your best bet is going to be simply, if you have a look at this bottom picture, just let a swarm of firefighters attack that car. If you give the firefighters clear instructions, something along the line of, we need this patient out of this vehicle as quickly as possible, they will swarm over it and rip it to pieces like piranhas on a carcass. And if you let them do their jobs, they can get someone out of a car very quickly. And for someone who's very critically injured, that's almost always gonna be the right move. Now, what you wanna do is if you have a look at this top picture here, is set up nearby. You don't wanna be setting up directly uh, next to them. You don't want to be getting in the way of the firefighters who are going to be getting this person out. But when they're out, you want to be able to quickly remove them from the vehicle, put them on the stretcher. Now you have 360 degree access to them and you can perform those life-saving interventions that we talked about in the previous lecture. And if you do need to extricate someone, let's say you've You've arrived at a scene um, and you found someone you need to get them out of a car and they can't can't do it themselves uh, you have two options using the spine board the one down the bottom is the one that we probably use most commonly which is where you'll get uh, either a combi carrier or a scoop stretcher a spine board any sort of long board and you'll get it just under their bottom and the other end of that which you can't see in this picture will be resting on the stretcher and you get a number of people to just help pivot that person, maintaining them in a seating position and slide them backwards along the board onto the stretcher, at which point you can lay them down. If for whatever reason you can't get access to the door, uh, up the top there is another option where you can lay the chair back, slide the board down behind them and uh, smash the back window and slide them out through the back window. Now remember, if someone can get out themselves, 
and they don't have uh, you know, a, an obvious spinal injury, they're not complaining of uh, lack of feeling or deficit in their hands and feet, for example, investigate the possibility of them just standing up and walking out for you. So I've just put a few pictures up here for us to pick apart a little bit. Now, obviously I need to preface this by saying I have not been involved in any of these cases, um, and I'm sure that these, uh, all these professionals were doing their jobs very well. But let's just have a look at this case. So this is a person who has clearly been in a car crash and uh, was entrapped. And you can see the firefighters have removed the door. Now, my concern looking at this picture would be that the rescuers on scene may have gotten a little bogged down with their procedures. It looks to me like that doctor might be looking to get an IV. Um, and that's something that I would be thinking is probably something you could do in the car or at the very least after you've moved the person to the stretcher. Now let's say that that woman is completely stable, she's talking to them and her only injury is a very painful broken ankle. And they've been, they're, they're very confident at this point that there are no systemic injuries, then that actually would be really appropriate to get an IV and to manage her, her pain knowing that there is no chance of her suddenly deteriorating due to an extended on scene time. This comes back to what we spoke last time about uh, in regards to isolated injuries or multi-system injuries and making those decisions pretty early. Here's another picture. So the thing that jumps out at me, it looks like there's quite a bit of damage there. You now the paramedics have put their monitor up on the broken windshield there. So the person is uh, is clearly still inside and they've started attaching uh, them up to get some vital signs. Now that's not right or wrong, but what it is going to mean is that when it comes time to extricate that person, it's going to be hard. There's now going to be a big tangle of wires uh, and um, you just need to make that decision about whether or not that's going to be value added. If that patient in there was very unwell, was losing consciousness, was very pale, complaining of terrible chest or abdominal pain, that's someone that I wouldn't be doing that for. I'd be saying to the firefighters, this person needs to get out immediately, and I wouldn't be attaching any uh, monitors or blood pressure cuffs or ECG leads or anything to them, because all that's going to do is impede the firefighters in their work, and until that person gets out, there's nothing really I can do for them. Now that's my last slide. One thing that I just wanted to make you guys aware of, and please feel free to do your own research on this, is that in a lot of countries overseas where there are uh, very underfunded or no ambulance services, people who are in major trauma very often just get thrown into the backseat of a car or into the back of a ute and driven to hospital. And a horrible statistic is that when every other variable is compared for, for example, if they get taken to a major trauma hospital, they actually have better outcomes than a lot of patients in the rich industrialized Western countries who have these injuries. And the only difference is that in those countries, in those poorer countries, bystanders are just pulling that person out, throwing them in a car and going, and their on scene time is about five minutes. Whereas traditionally here in the West, We've had extended on scene times, spent a very long time immobilizing people and uh, performing a bunch of procedures on scene and delaying their transport to things like surgery, blood transfusions, and advanced imaging like CAT scanning. So that's just some food for thought that I want all of you guys to reflect on.